Sub level 4 is actually really unique. Uh, this isn't actually the weirdest spawn point. Um, this area actually has some water that's actually shallow enough that any Pikmin can, can walk across, uh, which is definitely unusual for this game. I actually can't remember any other instance of this in the series. Uh, so yeah, this is actually pretty novel. We also have all these little butterflies. If we defeat them, uh, there's a chance they'll drop sprays or nectar. Obviously, they're color-coded. Um, so yeah, if we can actually get some more uh, resources from this, that'd be great, but otherwise it's fine. Uh, there are other opportunities in the future. Um, yeah, and now they're too high up. Did we even get nectar from that? I don't think we did. Wow, that was really uh, unfortunate, actually. Um, yeah, we got like nothing from that. Um, cool. That's like the worst case scenario, actually. Um, there's also this area over here with the um, candy pop buds. Um, hypothetically, if we had lost Pikmin up to this point, uh, we could grow more here. Um, but just to demonstrate, yeah, we can actually walk along this water. Um, I am not used to actually starting on that side of this area, so I am actually trying to figure out where the heck the treasure is. Um, because I honestly am not 100% sure. Never mind, there it is. Um, this floor also has a geyser, um, which is actually kind of unusual. Wow, this is actually a good spawn point because uh, it actually won't take very long to carry it back. Um, so yeah, this actually worked out really well uh, compared to some uh, level configurations I've seen. This is the Arboreal Frippery for 10 Pokos. And that's all there is on sub-level 4, but again, uh, I actually don't know where it is exactly, but there is a geyser on this floor. So for example, if you lose a lot of Pikmin and want to keep all your treasure, uh, but want to leave and start over, um, yeah, I can actually see it off in the distance, like barely loaded in. Um, yeah, you can leave and keep all your treasure uh, and still like exit the uh, cavern early. Sub-level 4 is essentially like a rest floor, like there's not any real threat. We have the butterflies that are actually helpful at times because they can actually give you nectar. Uh, we just happen to have a situation where we got nothing from any of these, um, which is actually very unusual to not even get nectar. I'm used to not getting sprays from those, but nectar feels kind of extreme. Um, like, really unusually bad luck, even for me. I know I don't have the best luck in games, and yet here we are. Um, like, getting even worse luck than usual. Um, we have a treasure right here, right next to a bulb orb. Uh, please don't deal with the fire right now. Um, so we'll carry that back in a moment. I'm still a little bit concerned about falling wallywogs and boulders, so I am treading a little bit lightly. Um, to tell the truth, one of my biggest issues with Pikmin 2 in terms of this Let's Play is memorization of areas that look very similar to each other. Um, like, a lot of areas look so similar to the point where it's actually really hard to keep everything, um, like, to retain information about like what's coming up like it's hard to remember for me like what's like like what floor has which hazards basically uh, because of how similar a lot of these environments tend to be to each other they kind of all blend in after a while For 130 Pokos, we have the Endless Repository. Like, I'm actively trying to remember if there's a Candy Pop Bud on this floor. I want to say there's a purple Candy Pop Bud somewhere in the shower room. I literally don't know what floor it is. We might have passed it, actually. Um, we have 50 purple Pikmin, uh, which actually works out really well. We should still be on target uh, in terms of having enough for something very uh, oddly specific by the end of our adventure. Um, 
My pointer is acting up. I think I'm holding it too low. Um, it actually feels weird playing a Wii game that uses the pointer controls after playing a, um, a remaster or a port more like it, um, that had, uh, gyro aiming to approximate, uh, pointer controls. Like, it actually feels a little bit disorienting, um, yeah, actually having literal gyro or literal pointer controls instead of, like, simulated, um, pointer controls, um, I actually don't know which I prefer in a lot of cases. In some ways, I actually think I prefer, um, gyro j just because even though it has to be reset a lot like the, it can't get thrown off by like interference or anything so in that way i almost feel like i prefer gyro but again the downside is you will have to recalibrate the controls like constantly uh because of the, the center point of the gyro constantly being thrown out of alignment so yeah it's kind of like a toss-up for me i can definitely see arguments for both um but yeah i think i generally lean more towards gyro than uh, Pointer, personally. Alright, let's try to defeat this before the uh, cutscene starts. <laughs> this is the Broken Food Master, worth 90 pokos. This is actually kind of an unusual setup for this floor. Normally I'm used to the sardine can appearing somewhere else, um, in a different spot. But I actually don't even see the, uh, landmark I'm looking for at all. And we have yet another bottle cap called the Pondering Emblem, worth 100 pokos. And yeah, that's actually everything on this floor. Um, normally there's like this like raised area, and that's not here at all. So I'm actually really uh, intrigued by that, how how that is not here. Because normally, yeah, there's like a, an elevated area that you have to toss blue Pikmin into um, to carry out at least one treasure. So yeah, this is a really weird setup. So far the shower room hasn't been too bad, uh, but floor 6 is when things start to get really messy. By the way, I don't know if I mentioned this, but in addition to dealing a lot of damage uh, from a direct hit, um, the purple Pikmin also home in slightly, uh, which is very helpful in a lot of situations. Um, the reason this area sucks is we have these new Dweevils that carry bombs. Um, obviously you can use this to your advantage, uh, and basically lure, um, and basically lure them towards other enemies so they'll blow up, um, but it's really bad if you're not expecting them. Like, if one drops from the ceiling, uh, it can definitely be very startling and difficult to actually, uh, account for that, so, um... To account for that, we are going to use White Pikmin to carry a lot of the treasures, uh, just because if anything happens, uh, we'll be able to very quickly get them out of danger, really, really quickly. Um, we also have an Electric Dweevil here, and a Poison Dweevil that picked up the uh, Dwarf Bulb Orb. Again, uh, Purple Pikmin are very effective against Dweevils because they're easy to stun, uh, so the elemental weaknesses aren't super important. Next up, for 100 Pokos, we have the Behemoth Jaw. So, that's like the, the scariest part, like the tunnel where like, 
uh, the Dweevils can show up at any time. That's like one of the scariest parts of this. Uh, but this layout here is a mess. Like, wow, this area is a mess. Um, we have a new type of snitch bug, the bumbling snitch bug. Um, it actually doesn't pick up Pikmin, it picks up captains. Um, which in some ways is worse because if the Pikmin don't have a leader and you have to fight a bunch of other enemies nearby, um, that, and then the Pikmin can be very easily picked off as you're trying to worry about the snitch bug, um, that's not great. Um, so I'm trying to, to kind of hug the wall, uh, defeating the dwarf ball borbs along the way. Uh, and also trying to not wake up the adult. Um, that's an example of this happening. Uh, I used the spray there just because otherwise we would have lost the Pikmin. Um, also, we kind of needed nectar anyway, so I guess it worked out. Uh, not ideal, obviously, especially as we're trying to uh, hold on to sprays, but again, otherwise we would have lost that Pikmin uh, for sure, just because uh, we weren't in control of the party. Um, so yeah, this is why uh, this floor kind of sucks, because there's a lot of different uh, conflicting hazards and enemies, and if the, they happen to spawn in a really bad setup, you're just kind of out of luck. There's not much you can really do uh, to accommodate for that. Um, like, if you get a bad uh, level arrangement, yeah, your options are to like tough it out and make the best of it, or reload a save, that's the other option. Um, and to be fair, that is also a viable strategy at times, is to simply reload a save, um, and then like not worry about um, like losing resources by just reloading, since every every floor does autosave. Also, I'm used to there being water on this floor. We have a Snapple lid called the Abstract Masterpiece, worth 30 Pokos. I'm pretty sure the Abstract Masterpiece is actually located somewhere else in a different version of the game. Um, like in the, um like, PAL version of the game or something. Like, some of the uh, treasures actually were relocated for some reason. Oh, that's not great. Um, trying to fight a poison enemy with a whole squad of Pikmin there. Um, and this is the Rubber Ugly, worth 90 Pokos. But yeah, these last two floors have been very atypical. Like, set pieces that I thought were fixed, like, you know, the, the floor is randomized, but some parts of the floor will always be there. Um, that was not the case here. Like, this was completely um, not what I was expecting from this floor. Uh, which is both exciting and also kind of intimidating having to adapt to that. After that very chaotic floor that definitely caught me off guard with just how randomized it was, um, we have a surprisingly easy final boss of this particular cavern. Um, we fought a toady bloister earlier uh, for the aquatic mine, um, and this is basically like a boss version of it. So this is the ranging bloister. Uh, the way this works is it will basically follow whichever captain is currently being played. Um, so the way to fight this is to basically uh, switch back and forth um, like so. So basically have Louis uh, lure it over in such a way um, that Olimar has an opportunity to attack it and then attack quickly and then swap back and forth um, to try to kind of catch it off guard like so. Um, yeah, overall this is a surprisingly easy fight uh, once you know how it works, because it is a little bit tricky to get used to like the timing of switching uh, between the two captains. But yeah, overall, not too bad.
Processing, how odd, the gooey creature dissolved, leaving this curious item behind. It appears to be coated in slime. Are you sure you want to collect this? Absolutely sure! You'll toss just about anything in my hold. It would be nice if you cleaned occasionally. I do like how the ship has a lot of personality, especially since Olimar himself uh, doesn't like narrate this particular adventure. Um, like usual, we're, we're swapping over to the uh, white Pikmin uh, to speed up this process a little bit. We also cleared out the uh, wall in the cutscene, um, which again shows that some things do take place in cutscenes in real time, meaning it is good to be a little bit care careful if there's like a ton of enemies around when you're having to actually um, activate a cutscene. And we have the Amplified Amplifier for 100 Pokos. This shape is well suited for the emission and amplification of sound waves. A moment, please. I shall use this as the final part in my new sound equipment. The Mega Tweeter is done. Captain Olimar, this device has increased the acoustic range of your whistle. This was definitely more helpful on GameCube, uh, because the cursor uh, was limited in how far out it could go. So being able to actually whistle across the entire- oh, that is very lucky. Uh, being able to whistle across the entire screen is extraordinarily useful, um, but because we can simply move the cursor around, it's a lot less helpful in this version, uh, but still nice to have a little bit more range on this. Again, basically push the captain into the spray, and as soon as they start drinking it, um, Quickly start drinking it yourself, and you'll get two. That is very lucky to get one from an egg. Um, especially because I used one by, uh, by necessity to keep, keep a Pikmin alive, uh, even though I definitely could have just reloaded um, and kept the spray. With over 1,200 Pokos uh, worth of treasure, we are now over uh, 90%. And yeah, even though there were definitely some unexpected parts of that uh, run, uh, we still managed to get through unscathed. We still have a little bit more time for the day, just enough, uh, so I'm going to try to make a quick run for another Bitter Spray. Um, if, if we need to, we can get more tomorrow uh, before the next dungeon. Actually, I don't think there's enough time um, to both let that grow enough and also round up all of the uh, berries. So we're actually not going to worry about that. Instead, I'm simply going to go over here uh, to break the eggs as usual, um, see if there are any sprays in here. Um, there are not, unfortunately, so oh well. Also, by the way, something I don't think I've talked about is when you enter a cavern and if you take damage on the overworld, uh, the captains will regain health uh, for that um, sub-level, or for that uh, cavern. Uh, so you really don't have to worry about damage too much. Um, also, the Tony Bloister respawns right away, so that's actually a good way to get more Pikmin uh, by collecting its like bulb at the end of its tail, uh, because it does respawn uh, pretty often. Uh, but that basically takes care of another day um, in the perplexing pool.
with 1300 pokos worth of treasure, our goal of 10,000 pokos is within reach. We also managed to grow more yellow Pikmin and blue Pikmin, uh, but the other numbers have stayed the same, and we have lost none. Olimar, you'll soon be promoted to manager. Only a small bit of debt remains. You've done great, as have I. No one dodges debt collectors like I do. I'm a pro. So, we have three or four more above-ground treasures in the perplexing pool, and one more cavern, and I'm going to try to tackle all of that next time. If you know what's coming up, it should be a very interesting day. So thank you for watching, and I hope you'll join me next time for more Pikmin 2.